There's a whole other set of issues about how robots should be treated under the law. Now, the obvious knee-jerk reaction is, well, you own a robot, you're responsible for everything that it does. But as these devices become much more autonomous, it's not at all clear that that's really the right answer or a good answer. You go out and you buy a great new robot and you send it down the street to go pick you up a uh, Frappuccino down at Starbucks, and maybe it's accidental, but it's standing on the corner, it happens to bump some kid into traffic and a car runs the kid over. The police come, they're gonna come arrest you for this action. Do you really feel that you're as responsible as you would be if you had gone like this and pushed that kid into traffic? I would argue, no, you don't. So we're going to need new kinds of laws that deal with the uh, consequences of well-intentioned autonomous actions that robots take. Now, interestingly enough, there's a number of historical precedents for this. You might say, well, how can you hold a robot responsible for its behavior? You really can, actually. And let me point out a couple of things. The first is, most people don't realize that corporations can commit tr criminal acts independent of the people in the corporation. So uh, in the Deepwater Horizon Gulf Coast accident, as an example, uh, BP oil was charged with criminal uh, violations, even though people in the corporation were not necessarily charged with those same criminal violations, and rightfully so. So how do we punish a corporation? You punish a corporation by interfering with its ability to achieve its stated goal. You make huge fines, as they did in, in that particular case. You can, put, you can demand that the company go out of business. You can revoke its license to operate, uh, which is a death penalty for a corporation. You can have it monitored, as they do in antitrust cases. Many companies, uh, IBM, Microsoft, I think, have monitors to make sure they're abiding by uh, certain kinds of behavioral standards. Well, that same kind of activity can apply to a robot. You don't have to put a robot in jail, but you can interfere with what it's, it's trying to do. And if these robots are adaptable, logical, and are learning, they'll say, oh, I get it. You know, I can't do that because my goal is to accomplish something in particular, and if I take this particular action, that's actually going to be working against my interest in accomplishing that situation. So rehabilitation and modification of robot behavior just as with a corporation, is much more logical than you might think. Now, another interesting historical precedent uh, is prior to the Civil War, there were a separate set of laws that applied to slaves. They were called the slave codes. And slaves were property. But interestingly enough, the slave owners were only held liable under certain conditions for the actions of their slaves. The slaves themselves were punished. Uh, under uh, if they committed crimes. And so we have a historical precedent for the kinds of ways in which we can sort this out so that you are not in constant fear that your robot is gonna bump into somebody and you're gonna go to jail for 20 years for, for negligent homicide or whatever it might be.